guys, good morning. If you keep on watching my videos, please don't forget to smash that subscribe button as well as the bell button so you will get a notification every time I upload a new video. Please also comment below so I will know if you like my video, if you don't like it, or if you want to suggest a topic, you are most welcome to do so. So our topic for today is CPP, OAS, and GIS. CPP stands for Canada Pension Plan, OAS stands for Old Age Security, and GIS stands for Guaranteed Income Supplement. These are retirement benefits offered by the federal government based on your income or the amount of your contribution or both during your working years. So you have to apply for these benefits to enjoy them. So let's get started. Canada Pension Plan, CPP, or in Quebec, Quebec Pension Plan, or QPP. You can receive monthly payments starting as early as your 60th birthday. What you will receive will depend on how much you contributed into the plan while you were still working. The CPP Retirement Pension is a monthly taxable benefit, so it's taxable, um, that replaces part of your income when you retire. And if you qualify, you will receive the retirement pension for the rest of your life. Again, two qualifications. First, you must be at least uh, 60 years old. And second, you have made at least one valid contribution to CPP. And to enjoy this benefit, you must apply. So CPP payments are not automatic. You must apply and you can apply as early as uh, nine months in advance of when you want to start your pension. So the next question is, how much is the pension amount? So the amount you will receive monthly will be based on the age you decide to start your CPP, your average earnings throughout your working years, and contribution amount and for how long you contributed to the CPP. Canadians usually start their pension at around age 65. However, you can start receiving your CPP retirement pension as early as 60 years old or as late as 70 years old. You might be thinking, wow, I, want, I can start at 60, right? So I'd like to do that. Well, if you start receiving your pension earlier, the monthly amount you will receive will be smaller and if you start at age 65 or 70 and if you start later but not later than 70 years old your pension amount will be larger okay the maximum monthly amount you can receive is reached when you turn 70 years old so for 2021 the maximum monthly amount you could receive as a new recipient starting the cpp retirement pension at age 65 years old is around 1200 um, it's actually uh, 1,203.75 and the average monthly amount in January this year is just around 619.75. This means a lot of people are not receiving the maximum CPP retirement pensions. Anyways, to get the maximum amount of CPP retirement pension, you need to have worked for 40 years and has maximized the contribution every year. So. There is a computation for that contribution and it is based on your salary which is 10.9% for CPP split between you and your employer. Meaning, um, you contribute 5.45% and your employer contributes 5.45% uh, as well. With QPP, it's 11.8% so you, you contribute 5.9%. And, the, and then your employer also contributes 5.9%. But whether you receive the minimum or maximum is a case-to-case -case basis and it's determined by your situation. So if you want to know the estimated amount of your um, monthly CPP retirement pension payments, you can always log into uh, My Service Canada account. I included the link down below. And if you're not, if you haven't registered yet, you can do that. Okay, if you don't have an account yet but you have to wait in the mail to receive your personal access code to complete your registration you might also want to try the canadian retirement income calculator there's a link down below as well to help you better understand your um, future financial security 
So the next question is, can you still work while receiving CPT retirement pension? The answer is absolutely. Okay, you can still work while receiving your CPT retirement pensions without reducing your pension amount. In fact, you can increase it by means of the CPT post-retirement pensions and um, you are under 70 years old, you can still make CPT contributions. And each year you contribute to CPT will result in a post-retirement benefit and it increases your retirement income. So this benefit will be paid to you automatically the following year and you will receive this for the rest of your life. So if you're 60 to 65 years of age, okay, receiving CPP retirement pensions and you decided to work, you cannot opt out of CPP contributions. CPP contribution is mandatory for anyone working under the age of 65. And when you reach the age of 65, this is the time you can choose to stop your post-retirement contribution. So if you are receiving CPP retirement pensions and still working at age 65, you now have the choice to opt out of CPP contribution. And of course, when you reach the age of 70, your CPP contributions will stop even if you still if even if you are still working no more contributions at age 70. by the way the post retirement benefit or prb is a lifetime monthly benefit for employees who work in canada outside of quebec okay while receiving a canada pension plan cpp or quebec pension plan qpp retirement pension so well, the next question is um, how much could you receive from PRP? Like the CPP retirement pension, the amount of each post-retirement benefit or PRB will depend on how much you earn, okay, the amount of CPP contributions you made during the previous year, and your age as of the start date of the PRP. And if you want to know the estimated amount of your PRB, you can use the Canadian Retirement Income Calculator, CRIC, and there's also a link that I provided down below. The CRIC can also give you an idea of your other retirement income, which of course includes CPP and OAS benefit estimates. Now, Typically, Canadians start their um, CPP retirement pensions or they start to collect their retirement pension at around age 65. However, you can start receiving it as early as age 60 or as late as age 70. So if you start receiving your pension earlier, okay, the amount you will receive will be smaller. Okay, I've already mentioned that, but if you decide to start later, you'll receive a larger monthly amount. So if you start before age 65, Payments will decrease by 0.6% each month or by 7.2% per year up to a maximum reduction of 36% if, if you start at age 60. So if you start at age 65, payment will increase by 0.7% each month or by 8.4% per year up to a maximum increase of 42% if you start at age 70. You may start to think, at what age should I start collecting CPP retirement pension? Okay, The answer is, it really depends on your personal situation. There is no wrong or right answer to this. Okay, There are many factors which you should uh, consider okay, when deciding when to start receiving your CPP retirement pension. Okay, You have to think about your um, health, your financial situation, and of course your plans for retirement for example if you are healthy and your family has a history of long life thus you are expecting to live a long life as well and you have access to other sources of income then you may want to choose to start enjoying your cpp um, retirement pension at a later date of course 
this will result in a larger monthly pension which can help protect you from outliving your savings. You may also choose to start receiving your pension before age 65. But okay, you should always remember this will result in a smaller monthly payment. Okay? However, if you prefer to work less or you want the money now to pay off debts or to fund your retirement plans or better yet, if you plan to invest this money and you think you can manage it better or grow it more, then get it. It is actually about planning. Now, let's talk about other CPP benefits. So, CPP Retirement Pension is not the only benefit we can get from CPP. Other CPP benefits include the PRB or Post-Retirement Benefit, which we already discussed. You qualify for the CPP Post-Retirement Benefit if you work while receiving your CPP Retirement Pension while under the age 70 and decide to keep making contributions. This contribution will go toward post-retirement benefits, which will increase your retirement income. And each year you contribute to the CPP will result in an additional post-retirement benefit. Okay, You will receive this benefit automatically the following year and you will receive this benefit for the rest of your life. You can choose to stop your post-retirement contributions when you reach the age of 65 and if you're still working when you reach 7 years old, your contribution will stop whether you like it or not. Another benefit is the disability benefit. So the Canada Pension Plan or CPP Disability Benefit is a monthly payment you can get if you are under the age of 65, have made enough contributions into the CPP okay or have a mental or physical disability that prevents you from doing any type of work okay have a disability that is long term or uh, indefinite duration or is likely to result in death so this means if your medical condition is short term or temporary you are not eligible for the cpp disability benefit so you might want to try employment insurance sickness so for the cpp disability benefit it is something that's really on the more serious type of disability that can lead to um death anyways you can receive a cpp disability pension and a cpp retirement pension at the same time when you reach the age of 65 and you are getting the cpp disability pension it will be automatically converted to cpp retirement pension so there's another benefit that's called the cpp post-retirement disability benefit so if you're receiving the cpp retirement pension before the age of 65 and you have a severe and prolonged disability you may qualify for a cpp post-retirement disability benefit if you made enough cpp contributions okay um so the benefit amount will be added to your monthly cpp retirement pension payment you will receive this benefit until you turn 65 and you have to apply for this benefit. Remember that. Now, if you have children okay, under the age of 25, okay, there's there are benefits for children under 25 years old. So, the Canada Pension Plan or CPP Children's Benefit is a monthly benefit for dependent children under the age of, um, under the age of 18 or between 18 to 25 years old but they should be attending school full time okay of someone receiving a cpp disability benefit or deceased cpp contributors so there are two types of cpp um, children's benefits the first one is a disabled contributors child's benefit so a monthly payment for a child of the person receiving a cpp disability benefit
The second one is um, a surviving child's benefit. Okay, it's a monthly payment for a child of the deceased contributor for the benefit to be paid. Okay, the the deceased contributor must have made sufficient contributions to the CPP. Once the child turns 25, they are no longer eligible for this benefits. So you might ask, okay, how much can a child receive? So it is actually a flat rate adjusted annually and for 2021, the rate is uh, 257.58. And you have to apply for this benefit as soon as possible because you can lose benefits. Okay, the CPP can only make back payments for up to 12 months or one year. There is no clawback for the children's benefit even if they work in the summer. So, and the benefits are not affected if the child marries as long as all the eligibility requirements continue to be met. Okay, for example, your 20-year-old uh, daughter got married, but she's still in school full-time, so it means uh, she is still eligible. Now, eligibility for the disabled contributor's children benefit ends up on the month the CPP contributor's death. However, okay, the child can still be eligible for the children's benefit as the, children, as the child of a deceased CPP contributor. If the dependent is aged 80 to 25 and receiving the disability benefit, it will be converted to the surviving child's benefit automatically when CPP is notified of the contributor's death. But for children under the age of 18, application is required to convert the disability benefit to surviving child's benefit. Now, CPP death benefit. Okay, Yes, you heard me right. Okay. If you die and are a CPP contributor, the CPP debt benefit will provide a one-time payment to your estate. So this is a one-time uh, lump sum payment to the estate on behalf of a deceased CPP contributor. Two things to remember. So if an estate exists, the executor named in the will or the administrator named by the court to administer the estate applies for the death benefit so the executor should apply for the benefit within uh, 60 days of the date of death and if no estate exists or if the executor has not applied for the death benefit payment may be made to other persons who apply for the benefit in the following order of priority so the the person that has paid for or that is responsible for paying for the funeral expenses of the deceased or it can also be an institution the next one is the surviving spouse or common law partner of the deceased or okay the next of kin of the deceased so the cpp death benefit is still at a flat rate okay of 2500 or 2500 one time lump sum payment. OAS, so the old age security OAS pension is a monthly payment you can get if you are 65 years and older. Um, in some cases, Service Canada will be able to automatically enroll you, but for most, you will have to apply for the old age security pension. And you can receive your first payment the month after you turn 65. Okay, and uh, you can reach and uh, you can receive a higher old age security pension amount for each um, uh, for each month you decide to delay your first payment. Okay. And you can receive up to 618.45 per month. That's for April to June 2021. That's a maximum monthly payment. Okay. Um, the amount you will receive depends on how long you lived in Canada. And OAS is a taxable benefit. Okay, so the old age security pension is reviewed and 
January, April, July, and October to reflect the increases in the cost of living as measured by the Consumer Price Index or the term we always use, index to inflation. Okay, so your pension will not decrease if the cost of living goes down. Okay, does it ever really go down? Now, if your income is higher than the set threshold, you will have to repay part or your entire old age security pension. So the next question is, um, should you wait to start collecting old age security? Okay, well, CPP or Canada Pension Plan Retirement Pension can start at age 60. With OAS or Old Age Security Pension, you can receive your first payment or first pension payment the month after you turn 65. Okay, and like CPP, you can receive a higher amount for each month you decide to delay your first payment. You can delay a uh, payment of the old age security pension for up to 60 months or five years after you turn 65, okay? So the longer you delay, the larger your pension payment will be each month. But after age 70, there is no advantage in delaying your first payment, okay? In, the f in fact, okay, you risk losing benefits. So if you're over the age of 70 years old and you are not receiving an old age security pension, you should immediately apply. So you might think, uh, should I delay my OAS pension to get a larger amount? Okay, the answer there is absolutely. Okay, but you should always consider your personal circumstances. Okay, there are many factors you should think about when deciding when to start receiving your old age security pension. Okay, this includes your first and foremost health. Okay, the second is your financial situation and of course, okay, your plans for retirement. Okay, just like delaying your CPP retirement pension, you should think about whether you plan to keep working. Okay, if your spouse or family partner wants to apply for the allowance, that's another topic. Okay, you should consider your health and of course your retirement plans. A old age security or OAS clawback. Okay, what's a clawback? When you say clawback, it means a certain amount is taken back because you cross or go beyond a certain threshold. So the government will take back the money they already gave you because you went beyond the limit they set for a certain benefit. Okay, with the uh, old age security pension, CRA or Canada Revenue Agency set a minimum threshold for 2021 uh, for okay, 79,845. So if your income is higher, example, you're receiving CPP retirement pension and you withdraw money from your RSP, both are income and it will be combined and the total is above the threshold. Now you will have to repay part or all of your old age security pension uh, depending on how much you went beyond the threshold. Now, delaying your old age security pension. So, as, as I've said a while ago, every month you delay your OAS pension, okay, you gain 0.6%, which is 7.2%. That is uh, 0.6 times 12 months in a year. So, if, for example, you delay your OAS pension for a whole year and you were supposed to receive $600, I'm just pulling up numbers here, okay, 600. Instead of receiving 600, after a year, you will receive 643.20 per month, okay? And if you further delay it to five years, that will be 0.6% times 60 months, okay, or five years, a total of 36, okay? You will receive, okay, 36 times six, okay, the best 600 is around um, 816, okay? But of course, okay, you have to consider and really think about your personal circumstances. And with old age security pension payments, um, they are taxable income.
Okay? It's taxable, but your taxes are not automatically deducted each month. Thus, okay, you will see the whole amount. You can ask for the federal income tax okay, to be deducted monthly from your payment. Just sign into your uh, My Service Canada account. Okay, what are the qualifications to receive old age security pension? Okay, um, your employment history, unlike CPP retirement pension or other CPP benefits, is not a factor in determining eligibility. Okay, you can receive the old age security pension even if you have never worked. Okay or are still working. So if you are 66 years old and still working, you can still receive OAS pension. Okay, or if you're already 66 and never work, you can still receive OAS pension. Okay. Now, if you are living in Canada, the qualifications are, okay, you must be 65 years old or older. Okay, be a Canadian citizen or legal resident. At that time, your old age security application was approved. Okay, and have resided in Canada, remember this, for at least 10 years since the age of 18, at least 10 years, okay? Now, if you live outside Canada or you are living outside of Canada, okay, you must be 65 years or older. You must be 65 years or older, okay, have been a, can have been a Canadian citizen or a re legal resident of Canada on the day before you left Canada. Okay, and have resided in Canada for at least 20 years since the age of 18. So if you're in Canada, 10 years. Outside Canada, 20 years. And um, to be able to get the full amount of old age security pension, you must have lived in Canada for at least 40 years after you turned 18. Okay, Anybody who okay, was born in Canada, okay, 40 years. Okay? But you can enjoy this benefit even if you just resided in Canada for at least 10 years, okay? But the amount, of course, will be less, okay? So because they will compute it like um, 10 divided by 40 years or one-fourth of the old age security pension benefit. If you lived in Canada for 20 years, okay? 20 years divided by 40 or 50% of the old age security pension benefit. Now you're interested how to apply, okay? You can actually apply online through uh, My Service Canada account, okay? You can register if you have, uh, if you don't have an account yet, okay? Um, you can register, but you will have to wait for your personal access code to complete your registration, okay? What if you are outside of Canada, okay? Can you still receive your OAS pension? Okay, you can qualify to receive old age security pension payments while living outside of Canada if one of these reasons applies to you. First, okay, I already mentioned it, you lived in Canada for at least 20 years after turning 18. Okay. If you do not qualify to receive your old age pen security pension while outside of Canada, for example, you live in Canada for only 15 years, your payment will stop okay, if you are out of the country for more than six months after the month you left. Now, Guaranteed Income Supplement or GIS okay, will also stop if you leave Canada for more than six months. So, which brings us to our next topic, GIS or Guaranteed Income Supplement. Now, the Guaranteed Income Supplement or GIS is a non-taxable monthly payment provided to low-income old age security OAS pensioners. So, meaning, to get the GIS, you should qualify for OAS. Okay? In essence, the GIS is a supplement to OAS that is intended for low-income seniors. That's nice, right? Anyways, um, just like OAS, GIS benefits are not tied to employment, so you can still collect them if you're still working or have never been employed. So you don't need to contribute to this program as um, it is funded by the government's general, government's general revenues. How does uh, GIS work with CPP? Okay. Um, GIS payments are different for everyone and your personal amount will depend on your income level. Okay, what is counted as income goes beyond employment earnings. So the, the government 
considers uh, CPP benefit as income, which means you must report any CPP amounts when applying for the GIS or Guaranteed Income Supplement um, benefit. How much can you get from GIS? So, GIS payments are calculated using your income and marital status. So, from April to June 2021, okay, the maximum monthly payment is uh, 923.71 if you're single, widowed, or divorced. So, the maximum monthly amount is different if you have a spouse or common law partner. If your spouse or common law partner receives the full OAS, Old Age Security Pension, your GIS is uh, 556.04 for April to June 2021. Uh, and um, if your spouse or common law partner does not receive an OAS pension, your maximum monthly payment is uh, 923.71 for April to June 2021. Okay, so, and uh, if your spouse or common law partner receives the allowance, another topic, your maximum monthly payment is 556.04 for April to June 2021. Okay, the GIS is also reviewed quarterly in January, April, July, and October, and the amount may fluctuate throughout the year to reflect increases in the cost of living based on the consumer price index okay that's what we call uh, index to inflation and monthly payment amounts does not decrease even if the cost of living goes down if ever cost of living goes down anyways so the government sets an income threshold for the gis benefit so to qualify your income must be below 18,744 if you're single, widowed, or divorced. In the, if you have a spouse or a common law partner, your combined income has to be below um, 24,768 if your partner receives the full OAS pension. Um, it should be 44,928 if your partner does not receive an OAS pension or the allowance. And the same amount, 44928 if your partner receives the allowance. So, you'll need to determine your income and deductions before applying for the GIS. Okay. When your earnings fall between 5000 and 15000 your GIS payment will be reduced by $0.50 cents for every dollar of income you make. Other qualifications for GIS. Okay, you are uh, you should be 65 years old or older. Okay, you live in Canada. You receive the old age security pension. Okay, your income is below 18,744 if you are single, widowed, or divorced. Okay, and um, if you move to Canada as an immigrant, okay, if you are an immigrant who is sponsored, okay, and um, if you are sponsored immigrant and have lived in Canada for less than 10 years okay, after age 18, you cannot receive the guaranteed income supplement while you are sponsored unless your sponsor um, uh, suffers uh, personal bankruptcy or imprisoned for more than six months okay, or is convicted of abusing you or if your sponsor already died. Okay. And if you are an immigrant who is not sponsored, you could receive the guaranteed income supplement if you receive um, the old age security pension. Okay, so uh, your guaranteed income supplement will be added to your old age security or OAS pension each month as one payment. And Okay. You will receive your first payment either on the same month you start your old age senior pension, um, the date on your or the date on your decision uh, letter. And 
just an advice, you should always file your taxes on time. Okay, all because although you do not have to pay taxes on your GIS or guaranteed income supplement uh, benefit, you must file your taxes before April 30th every year to avoid any disruption of your payments. Now, what if you leave Canada for more than six months? Okay. What if you leave Canada okay, for more than six months? Okay? You cannot uh, collect the guaranteed income supplement if you are outside of Canada for more than six months. How do they know that? Okay. Service Canada compares information with the uh, Canada Border Services Agency. Thus, okay, if you leave Canada for more than six months while collecting the Guaranteed Income Supplement or GIS, okay, Service Canada will determine if you are still eligible to those payments. If not, okay, they will calculate how much you were overpaid and you will then have to pay okay, or repay that amount. And Okay, you could also be fined for giving false, misleading, or purposely omitted information. Now, if you and your spouse or common law partner live apart for reasons beyond your control, such as uh, long-term care, okay, for one or both of you, okay, you may be able to receive a higher benefit payment amount. Your guaranteed income supplement payment can also stop um, if, okay, one, you did not file a tax return by April 30th, okay, or by the end of June, you did not provide the information about your income, or in the case of a couple, your income plus the income of your spouse or communal partner for the previous year, okay. Um, if you leave Canada for more than six consecutive months, okay, your income, or in the case of a couple, your income plus the income of your spouse or common partner is higher okay, than what is allowed to receive the benefit. Okay? Or if you are in a federal prison for a sentence of two years or longer, and of course, death. In addition to old age security pension, there are three other benefits that you may also qualify for. First is the GIS Guaranteed Income Supplement, which we already discussed. The second one is the allowance, and the third one is the allowance for the survivor. So, payment amounts for these benefits are based on your age, okay, marital status, and of course, level of income. These are not considered uh, taxable income. So GIS allowance and allowance for survivors, they are not taxable. For guaranteed income supplement, allowance or allowance for the survivor payments, amounts will be recalculated um, each July based on your net income in the previous calendar year. Payment can also increase, decrease, or stop Okay, according to the changes in your annual net income. Okay, allowance for people age 60 to 64. Okay, what is this allowance? The allowance is a benefit available to low-income individuals um, age 60 to 64 who are the spouse or common law partner of a guaranteed income supplement or GIS recipient. Okay, you qualify for the allowance if you meet all of these conditions. First, your age 60 to 64, okay, includes the month of your 65th birthday, okay, your spouse or common law partner receives an old age security pension and is eligible for the GIS, means, okay, your spouse or common law partner is receiving both OAS and GIS, okay, you are a Canadian citizen or a legal res resident, you reside in Canada and have resided in Canada for at least uh, 10 years since the age of 18 and you and your spouse or common law partner's annual combined income is less than the maximum annual threshold. Okay, um, so other circumstances 
where you might qualify for the allowance. Okay, if you meet all the above eligibility conditions, but your spouse or common law partner does not receive the OAS pension or the GIS because they are incarcerated or in prison. Okay, if you have not resided in Canada for at least 10 years since you turned 18, but you have resided or worked in a country that has social security agreement with Canada, okay, you may still qualify for a partial benefit. Okay, what does Service Canada do? It reviews your entitlement for the allowance every year using your income information from your federal income tax and benefit return. So if you still qualify, your benefit renews automatically. Okay, in July, you will receive a letter telling you that your benefit will renewed, will be renewed. Okay, that your benefit will be stopped or your income information is required. Okay. And on the month you turn 65, your allowance stops, but you become eligible for the OAS pension and possibly the GIS as well. And the amount of allowance received depends on marital status and the previous year's income or in the case of a couple, the combined income. So you should apply for the allowance 6 to 11 months before your 60th birthday. Okay. And the allowance is a benefit under the OAS program or Old Age Security Program. Allowance for the survivor. So the allowance for the survivor is a benefit available to people first age 60 to 64. Okay, who have a low income, who are living in Canada, and whose spouse or common law partner has died. You qualify for the allowance for the survivor if you meet all of the following conditions. Okay, first, you are age 60 to 64. Okay, you are a Canadian resident okay, or legal resident or a Canadian citizen. Okay, you reside in Canada and have, and have resided in Canada for at least 10 years since the age of 18. Okay, your spouse or common law partner has died and you have not remarried or entered into a common law relationship. And your annual income is less than the maximum allowed annual threshold. Okay? Just like the allowance, your allowance for the survivor entitlement is reviewed every year and if you still qualify, your benefits automatically renews and in July you will receive a letter telling you your benefit will be renewed, will be stopped or your income information is required. Okay. On the month of your 65th birthday, okay, your benefit stops at the same time you may qualify for OAS or Old Age Security Pension and possibly the GIS or Guaranteed Income Supplement. Okay. And the amount of allowance for the survivor you receive depends on your previous year's income. So if you are a surviving spouse or common law partner and your annual income last year was less than 25,272, okay, the maximum monthly benefit that you can receive is 1,400.05. This is April to June 2021 computation. Okay. And you should apply for the allowance for the survivor 6 to 11 months before your 60th birthday. Okay, you must apply in writing okay, for the allowance for the survivor. And then after you've applied, okay, Service Canada will inform you in writing whether your application was approved or not or whether additional information or documentation is required to make a decision on your application. And your allowance for the survivor payments will begin during one of the following months, whichever is latest, okay? The month after the death of your spouse or common law partner, okay? The month after you meet the eligibility requirements, the month after your 60th birthday or up to 11 months prior to the date uh, your application was received, okay? And then your allowance for the survivor payments will stop if I already told you this, you have not filed an individual income tax and benefit return with the Canada Revenue Agency by April 30th. Or if by the end of June each year, 
um, Service Canada does not receive the information about your net income for the previous year. Okay. You leave Canada for more than six consecutive months. Okay. Your net income is um, is above the maximum annual threshold. Okay. You are incarcerated in a federal pen- penitentiary because of a sentence of two years or longer. Okay. Of course, you have reached the age of 65. Okay, but then you will be eligible for the old age of pension and possibly PIS. Okay. You remarry or live in a common law relationship for more than 12 months or, of course, you die. Okay. So, these are just the basics of um, CPP, OAS, GIS, and allowances. Okay, They are retirement benefits offered by the federal government based on your income or the amount of your contribution or both. Okay, Planning your retirement is easy if you know these things, but you will need to know more than just the basics. Okay, Meeting with a retirement consultant is really the best way to maximize these benefits. Do not be afraid or do not be shy, nor do not even think twice to ask for an advice. Okay? And hey, this is the reason why we are here. To help you better understand and to guide you in terms of planning so you can be sure okay, you will be successful in attaining your retirement goals. The sooner you seek assistance and advice, the better your financial future will be. This video was about the basics and our next video will be an in-depth understanding of how these benefits really work and how we can apply these to you based on your personal situation so that you can maximize these benefits offered by the Canadian government. So, I'd like to thank you for watching my video. If you love what you just learned, please give me a thumbs up and kindly comment below. And of course, don't forget to click the subscribe button as well as the bell button so you will get a notification every time I upload a new video. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Bye for now!